At Facebook, I was the first research scientist. Uh, the initial goals for my position were to understand uh, how changes to the site were impacting user behavior. We had built our own infrastructure to kind of as a stopgap to enable us to do some, uh, some terabyte scale analytics, but we were going to have to scale it to uh, up to petabytes. And we realized that instead of uh, you know, continuing to invest in that infrastructure, we could build a more powerful shared resource to facilitate um, business analysis by uh, working with the open source community. And I kind of saw the path to uh, a complete infrastructure for doing analytical data management and realized that you know, it was going to be made up of existing open source projects as well as open source versions of a lot of the technologies that we had built out internally at Facebook and uh, realized that Cloudera would be a great sort of corporate entity within which to pursue those goals and to ensure that uh, it wasn't just Facebook that would be able to use this technology, but really you know, any, any enterprise. When we started Cloudera, we didn't have a real uh, core thesis around where the technology would be adopted. Uh, and I think that the first two years of the company, uh, as we were trying to, uh, to understand what the market was going to look like for this uh, technology, it wasn't uh, consolidating. It was just continuing to grow. The early adopters uh, were clearly in uh, the web and, and uh, digital media space. In terms of traditional industries, uh, the, the federal uh, and the government space, uh, really surprised me with how quickly they picked up the technology. I think it's because they really are the leaders in multimedia uh, data analysis uh, in terms of working with uh, text, images, video. Uh, I've really seen in the intelligence agencies uh, more sophistication than I've seen in the commercial domains. The other one that I was pretty surprised uh, to see how quickly it was picked up was in the retail space. Uh, so I would have thought that they had a little more structured data in terms of the point of sale data I uh, expected to be pretty well understood. But it turned out they had very large volumes of data and because a lot of the retailers were, were um, branching out into e-commerce, they had a lot of web, uh, web logs and web data as well. And I feel like there is kind of an arms race going on right now in the retail space uh, as well. And if you can understand consumer behavior uh, in, in greater detail than your customers, then you know, every, uh, every penny that you can eke out uh, on each good is increasing your margins and allowing you to invest more in R&D. Um, and so I think that it's sort of a virtuous cycle that begins. Financial services, to be completely honest, was, uh, <laughs> was one that I had hoped would be an early adopter, but um, there's a lot of internal processes. In financial services industries, I found that data management is often thought of as a project-specific uh, solution. They tend to not look at their businesses as a whole, and it can be even to the point where um, you know, individual trading desks could have their own CTOs. I still believe that the ceiling is highest in the financial services space, particularly as risk modeling becomes uh, more and more critical. Uh, it's just taking longer than I expected for, uh, for a lot of the, best, the practices that have evolved there um, to, to kind of fall away and, and for them to see that this is a better way to do things. If you really wanted to get started, uh, you know, first of all, you need to make a commitment to being, uh, to, to, uh, to conceiving of data as a competitive advantage. And I think once you do, I think the next step is to then, uh, to really build out a low cost, reliable infrastructure for data collection and, all, uh, and for data collection and storage for whichever line of business you perceive to be most critical. Uh, to your company, and then you can start layering on the complex analytics. I think most companies go wrong when they try and start with the complex analytics first. When deciding how to incorporate analytics expertise into an organization, you really have to be honest with yourself about uh, what your organization looks like, your, capa your capacity to hire, and, uh, and your long-term vision for what that organization is going to be. So I don't think there's any one right answer. When I went and found peers at Yahoo, they had built a centralized group called Strategic Data Solutions, and they had tried to run the entire gamut. So rather than just building this small group of people primarily focused on uh, you know, marketing analytics, they had really tried to own end-to-end. -end every everywhere from data storage to the actual P&L. In our group at Facebook, we, we, because we were a very fast-moving organization, uh, we really tried to emphasize that uh, we were much more of a platform, more of a service organization for the rest of the company. Uh, I wrote a book chapter for a book I put together with O'Reilly called Beautiful Data called Information Platforms and the Rise of the Data Scientist where I tried to articulate uh, you know, the infrastructure that we did build out at Facebook 
and the kinds of people that we were looking for in, in, in this, this, this title of, of data scientist. I actually see people sort of you know, self-describing uh, in their job titles on LinkedIn, or I'll even go to, uh, to discussions with you know, uh, scientists working on like, data intensive science is a, is a field that I'm pretty interested in, and, and I'll see them talking about themselves as data scientists. So it's pretty interesting. So I think it, it, is, it is evolving, it's taking hold. I think people do realize that there was a gap between what uh, the, the title of statistician or data analyst or business analyst represented, uh, or even data mining, and, and, and what they actually wanted. So it's, you know, language is, in a, is constantly in flux, and uh, so I think people are really grappling for, um, uh, to, draw, uh, to draw a boundary around the, the set of tools that, uh, and the set of skills that they're looking for. So it was kind of that combination of the, the whole research cycle that social scientists had, plus some additional uh, programming skills, plus the ability to do um, aggressive prioritization. It was a lot of what we were looking for. And of course, we expected sort of a, a good grounding in statistics and machine learning. So that was kind of the, uh, the table stakes. But I think where it's headed is, is really uh, you know, learning how to, to point this new infrastructure at uh, real business problems and really growing the imagination uh, of business people in terms of what they can do. Uh, and then allowing uh, you know, a variety of experts uh, to, to perform analysis. Measuring data is really job one. Uh, and if you can digitize uh, reality, then all of a sudden uh, you, can, you can now point um, you know, people who have skills at manipulating data regardless of domain uh, at the problem and potentially move forward uh, you know the world, your world, uh, faster than before.